Okay, now when you're spooling up the spinning reels, the bigger spinning reels which you want nice and tight, it can be a bit of a mission. Okay, firstly you'll start by spooling one reel the wrong way around. In other words, you first put your top shot, the braid you're going to use, until you get to the level where you can see there's only a little bit of space left and on there you'll put a bit of mono backing. The mono backing, and I'm talking about 50 meters 0.55 or 0.58, the reason you do that is to prevent any possible slipping for braid. Now there's a couple of knots I believe in and I've got confidence, but still these reels like the, the Daiwa BG Saltwater 8000 spinning reel I'm going to use for bigger fish specifically aimed to catch really big fish and you don't want under that high pressure that the braid possibly spins or comes loose so you have to do it wrong way around to see what actually can fit so what I've done is for instance I start with 300 meters top shot which is a cobra braid it's an eight strand it's good for casting it's more supple and it doesn't make the noise your four strand braids would and that's that's purely because of the 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 supple, how soft it becomes when it's eight strand, that it's eight carriers instead of the four carriers of a four strand braid, uh, braid. Now, you'll hear the four strand braids makes a noise through the reel, which is a normal thing. So what I've done is that you first on the reel, on a similar reel, or the exact same reel in this case, because I want the spools and I want the exact amount of line on. So I'll spool first 300 meters eight strand braid, then I'll back it up with a four strand, and that's to save cost because it's almost, you know, I won't say half the price, but it's close to uh, using a four strand as strong. And that you'll back up, say, for instance, in this case, we've put 600 meters, so it's 300 plus 600. Then I've added a bit of extra braid because the spools came in 300, um, another 150, so we're on 1,050 meters. And then I've added 50, 40, 50 meters of uh, normal monofilament, which is 0.55 or 0.58. And then I reverse it back to the reel. So once it's on, you see your reel is nice and full, but you've got the line wrong way around. Now I spool it back onto the reel I actually want it. So your mono will go on first, then all your backing braid, and then your 300 meters top shot, which is eight strand. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. All right, now what I'm doing, is I put that reel in a vise and I put the drag fairly tight because I want my braid on as tight as possible. And it's as tedious as what this is, you're going to do it once. Braid lasts for a very, very long time if you look after your equipment. Um, that's the positive about braid compared to mono. Mono, you would change regularly sometimes. I mean, I used to change it after every trip and sometimes two days into a trip, if your, if your line hit bricks or anything like that and you don't feel confident about it anymore take off your top shot put new top shot and I still do that on the fixed pull reels but on the spinning reels where you're going to fill this whole reel with braid you're going to do this once and uh, in a, for a long period of time you won't have to do it again so it takes a lot of time it took me probably a good hour working out all of that and putting it onto that reel and now I'm just putting it back and once it's on here we're ready to go now when you get these reels and you spool them, spooling on the first, for instance I've got two similar reels which makes this possible to do it like this and it is the best way to do it. So you can have exactly the right amount of backing and line and top shot on. But in your box you receive a little plastic packet with these washers in, with these reels. And that's to make sure your line lay, depending on the pressure you apply when you put the line on, what braid you use etc will determine the exact packing of your braid onto that reel so your line lay gets determined by the products you use and the pressure you put it on so a lot of times when you're starting off with a first spool you'll see if it's it's got it's putting a little bit too much in the bottom or a little bit too much in the top and these washers you then add underneath your spool to balance that if you see it makes a little lip on the on the bottom and a little dent on the top you need to add a washer then you do 30 40 turns and you can see if it's balancing out you watch where it's packing the line in any case and that way by adding you get three or four washers in a I think three washers in a reel then you'll be lifting your spool all the way until it packs at 100% so I already did it with the first reel so I know it's packing there and then what I do 
is once it's done with the reel, I just swap the spools and I put the reel I've already put washers on. I put the empty spool on that and put the full spool on the other reel and then start reeling it back on. A lot of times people don't know this to put to add the washers and sometimes you need a couple of washers on your, your entry level reels especially. Your mid range you'll need one or two and then your top end still need one or two sometimes. But if you don't know it, you'll see your line goes on like a cone and people couldn't understand that and then they immediately blame the reel or the product or the brand. It's normal that you have to add the washers to get the exact right line lay. Okay, I see we're pretty much to the end of the backing now, which means this is close to 700 meters. Uh, no, I'm lying, 800 meters of backing. And that was the gator braid, 48 pound. And before that, first on the spool, like I said, I had the 0.58 in this case, Kingfisher Giant Abrasion, and I put about 40 meters monofilament. On top of that, um, 750 meters, 48 pound gator four strand. And now the eight strand Cobra braid will follow as you can see, there it comes on. Now the knots I used to join the braid it's a cat's paw, you can have a look on our channel. We've got a clip with a cat's paw under knots. But it's two bimini twists, which you loop to loop eight times and then put it nice and tight. That we used to tie to, uh, with all your backings to your, your monofilament on the fixed spool reels as well as on the braided. If you've got, for instance, here we used, I used more than three spools of braid. So I've got three, three of those knots on already. But now from my braid to my leader, I'll only use the FG knot. And now another thing about line lay, um, you'll see now, this is perfect to actually show it as an example. You see the big gaps between the, the braid now. That's a good thing. You don't want a reel to pack it fine like that because when it's under high pressure, it cuts into itself. Where now it zigzags at a, a, at a nice enough angle that it can't cut in, it pushes down on it. But if it packs like that and you've put a very high pressure, like a very big fish you, you, you're pulling very hard, it will cut into itself. And when it gets stuck and that fish turns around and tries to swim away again, it's stuck so badly in there that it will pop the braid. Well, just some interesting facts. The weight of this reel is 850 grams, which is a little less than the dogfight. And then a lot of the features and technologies is based on the dogfight and Saltigo reels on this BG, obviously using different materials. But there's some very good reviews on, on the BGs on the internet if you go and look for them. And then just the line retrieve is 1.35 meters per turn, which is a hell of a lot of line which makes it nice and fast to get your baits back. Now just something worth mentioning, as the line gets less on the spool I've got in the vise, you have to release the drag a little bit because the drag actually gets tough and that applies to a very big fish just carrying on swimming. As your line gets less on your reel, the spool spins faster so you have to release your drag a little bit on the reel that's getting empty. Okay, well there we go. 1.1 kilometer, 48 pound braid on my BG8000. I've put 48 pound Cobra braid as a top shot, 300 meters. And then 750 meters gator braid, the four strand. And then 40, 50 meters, 0.58 monofilament, the, the Kingfisher Giant Abrasion. And that's just to ensure that this whole setup of, of braid on you won't slip. You use a bit of monofilament at the bottom. That also gives you a bit of stretch. Should a fish uh, get, take you down to the spool, you've got a little bit of stretch to play with to maybe turn that fish still. Um, there you've got a 5% chance if, if it's taken you there to actually still turn it. But yeah, the reason I use Cobra braid, well, I love this braid. Um, it's really, really a nice braid. And uh, not just from my mouth, but Johan Beek is our uh, champion long distance cast in South Africa, claims this braid to be the braid that casts the furthest out of any 50 pound braids on the market in South Africa. Now I kind of find the same, I haven't tested, meaning measured every cast, but you, you kind of get the same impression when you use this. So on my other reels I'm putting J braid, on this reel I still put the trusted Cobra braid I've used for many years, backed up with Gator braid.
and that's it and all I'm going to do now I'm not going to show the knot again there's a couple of clips that's got the FG knot on but I'll use a FG knot to uh, let me grab it the Rhino triple fish Rhino braid that's what I'll be using as a leader and this is 150 pounds so I'll use the FG knot and put a full length leader 8 meter leader onto the rod for casting.